Welcome to today's 12 at 12 program, our 12 minute gallery talk on works from the Arthur Ross Gallery's current exhibition. I'm Heather Mokhtadari, Assistant Director and Curator of the Arthur Ross Gallery, and I will be speaking about two photographs by the Mexican photographer Manuel Alvarez Bravo that are featured in the current exhibition, Many Voices, Many Visions, curated by Lynn Marston Atlas. Uh, here's a view looking into the Arthur Ross Gallery. And on the entrance wall on the left is one of the images that I'll be speaking about, titled Dia de Todos Muertos. And as we enter the gallery, uh, the little red arrow is pointing to the second photograph that I'll be highlighting, which is titled Margarita de Bonampak. And so you can see the two little red arrows point to the images that I'll be speaking about as part of this exhibition. One of the nice things about running this program on Zoom is that I can bring them together on one screen for the purpose of discussion. My goal for today's talk is to contextualize these two photographs within the socialist goals and ideology of Mexico's 20th century artist intellectuals, including Manuel Alvarez Bravo and his circle. So here is a self-portrait of Manuel Alvarez Bravo uh, later in life. But as you see, he was born in 1902 and lived to be 100 years old and passed away in 2002. And here we see him, uh, I believe, in his home, reaching out the window with his um, automatic shutter to take the self-portrait through the bars over his window. Bravo, uh, Alvarez Bravo was a self-taught photographer with informal training. And until his early 20s, he worked as a government clerk. And it was at, at that point, as a young man, he was introduced to photographic technique by two German emigres, one of whom was Wilhelm or Guillermo Kahlo, the father of the famous artist Frida Kahlo. He was introduced also to photography by the, the Italian photographer Tino Modotti, who was spending time in Mexico uh, with Edward Weston at this time. And she was the photographer for the Mexican magazine, Mexican Folkways. And so she gave him some photographic assignments that really got him his start in documentary street photography. And then uh, Modotti was uh, exiled from Mexico because of her communist activities and associations. So she left Mexico and left him with her cameras, uh, which he then used, uh, as well as her photo assignments. And Alvarez Bravo also had strong lifelong friendships with the muralists in Mexico, Diego Rivera, Jose Clemente Orozco, and David Alfaro Siqueiros. So in broad strokes, this gives you a sense of Alvarez Bravo's circle. Uh, here's an image that he took of Diego Rivera and Trotsky and Andre Breton at the time in which Trotsky was in exile in Mexico and around the same time that these three uh, individuals were writing a, a communist manifesto for the arts uh, in Mexico. And on the right-hand side is a photograph that Alvarez Bravo took of Frida Kahlo in his studio. But I'll bring us back to the images that we're focusing on. Uh, and this is a great image to start talking about the type of photography that Alvarez Bravo was doing for Mexican folkways. This is called Dia de Todos Muertos from 1933. And at this point when he was doing street photography in Mexico City, he was using a Graflex camera that was left to him by Tina Modotti. Uh, so that's a large format single lens, lens reflex camera that allows the photographer to get a really precise um, composition lined up before clicking the shutter. And it said that Alvarez Bravo was a photo photographer that didn't take many, many pictures of each subject. There were only you know, one or two frames of each shot that he took. So very careful composition. Referring to my notes to make sure I cover everything that I'd like to cover with this. Um, so he was very familiar with the tradition of Dia de Todos Muertos. He grew up with it as a child. 
And he gave this quotation at one point. Uh, on this occasion, they used to sell children toys representing death skulls made with sugar, which we children used to eat. I think this is where the real feeling of Mexican duality comes from, the duality of life and death. And he had grown up in the very tumultuous years of the Mexican Revolution in the early 20th century, and he experienced um, you know, much, much death uh, and, and bloodshed in those years. And so that informed the course of his photography throughout his life. And it, he also said, the concept, concept of death is explicit or implicit in all of my photographs. Uh, so I wanted to look at this uh, for a, a moment um, and bring our attention to the image. Uh, he talks about duality of life and death. And I think there's this really great sense of duality in this image with those dark, dark um, you know, background background blacks and then the highlights in the the sitter's face and the skull. And it's a really, I think, uh, self-conscious presentation of Mexican culture where she's holding the skull forward for us to see. Um, we can see the full side profile as well as the detailed work at the front. She's clearly presenting it to the photographer. And I would also argue that I can almost imagine a photographer standing there and asking her to tilt her face up to the sunlight. Because we've, we've all had photographs like this taken of us where we're looking into the sun and it's painful, but you know, someone's asking us to, to hold our face like that so that we can be seen. So I think this is um, a very staged portrait um, in, intended to represent Mexican popular arts. And we can even see a little hint of a turned wooden chair that she's been positioned in. And it's a, a photograph that represents this duality of interior and exterior where she's posed kind of within a little shaded nook, but she's facing outward into the sun. And to move on rather quickly, since this is a short talk, um, this is a photograph taken 16 years later in a period when Alvarez Bravo had uh, expanded his photographic repertoire to moving out into the provinces uh, at the encouragement of Diego Rivera and his other artist intellectual friends at the time. And this photograph is titled Margarita de Bonampak, and it's taken at an ancient Mayan ruin uh, in the countryside near the border with Guatemala. And uh, this is a, a young woman from uh, a cultural group that are descendants of the Mayas called the Lacondon. And I have that keyword on the lower right hand side for your reference. And the titling of the image is interesting. Um, and he did give very short and sometimes mysterious titles to his photographs. Um, but uh, she's clearly a member of this uh, cultural group that, that lives in the forest. And they had very little contact with outsiders throughout the 20th century. So even at this time, I can't imagine that they would be as acculturated that she would have this Spanish name. But that's, that's a, a question that I would love to explore further and, and know if there's an answer. But um, uh, she's a member of this uh, indigenous cultural group. And what I wanted to point out uh, as part of this presentation is that it was of great interest to the socialist artists, intellectuals, many of them European emigres uh, in Mexico to highlight indigenous groups along with popular Mexican arts as part of their ideology of socialism. So at one point, uh, Diego Rivera had commented, the painter who does not feel attuned to the aspirations of the masses, this man may not produce a work of art. And then another quotation from Alvarez Bravo talks about this interest in um, you know, Mayan civilization and saying before the 16th century Spanish conquest of the Aztecs, all art was of the people and popular art has never ceased to exist in Mexico. So I think this is an undeniably attractive image and composition, but uh, we have to contextualize it within this broader uh, social interest of these artist intellectuals. Uh, but at this point, I would like to draw our attention to the composition, which I think is really fascinating. And I think one of the most, um, I think a dramatic elements of this is the, the angle at which it's taken in which we're essentially looking upward at this young person. And I think that does a couple of things to our percep perception of the image. And one of it is that we're not on the same 
plane um, or line of view as this subject. It places her um, perhaps in a different world or a different time. Um, I think that his images of indigenous people are largely considered to be empowering to those cultures and taking them out of uh, an exploitive environment where they're being um, documented and presenting individuals uh, in, in terms of their humanity. So I think that that's really his interest in this photograph. And I should mention that he was on the site of Batam Pak for photographing the murals at the site. And then he ended up photographing some of the, the people in the area. And the other thing that this does uh, is that it presents her face almost in a mask-like context where um, in the image as I'm, looking, as I'm looking at it on my screen, I can see her pupils, but her eyes are darkened to the point where they almost look like the openings in a mask. And there was a great interest in um, pre-Columbian uh, arts of Mexico, they were being exhibited in New York at the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, great interest, as, as many of us know, in 20th century art in looking at ancient art and artifacts. And so there was this great cultural interest in uh, masks of this time. And uh, I think it's fair to say that that could have been part of his inspiration and a goal. I'll bring these images back together to conclude the program. Thank you so much for joining us and for your attention. And I highly encourage you to visit the exhibition, Many Voices, Many Visions, in person at the Arthur Ross Gallery. Thank you.